Hey, what's up, everybody? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. <laughs> Back with Billy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Billy was busy doing his homework. <laughs> I am. I have been reading. I have been reading. Billy from anxietyunited.com. For those it's of you good who, to be who back. don't know, I don't know how you could not know by now, considering we're such a cool. long-running smash hit, yeah, you man. and I. <laughs> so we're back for another episode, and <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to change gears. We were going to talk about one topic, and then at the 11th hour, I think we've decided to switch a little bit. Yes. Because I am sick, but uh, what are you going to do? My ears are all plugged up. My sinuses are all plugged up. I'm going to try not to cough up a lung while we're doing this, because that would be rude. And it's funny that just just before we went live, you came in and said that you were feeling like that, and I I said it's weird because like the last say forty eight hours I've been feeling it, right? And I pretty much guarantee that I'm adding so much more anxiety to the fact that I have a cold than you are. That I would not argue with you. That is probably true. <laughs> that is not something that that I do necessarily. I've never done it, but anyway, it seemed like that would be a good topic then for us to talk about today, since both of us are feeling under the I weather. I think so. Yeah, it's a good time to bring that up. So, <clears throat> tell me, how, what are you feeling? What do you, how do you feel physically, and what is it? What is it doing to well, you? The, the first I noticed was the other morning. I just woke up and just felt a bit disorientated, a bit off balance. Not too bad. Snotty nose. But then, like, within about an hour of being downstairs, it's just the heat. I feel like a raise in my body temperature. And then I begin questioning, like, what the hell's going on? Is it a cold? Is it something else? Is it just anxiety? What the freaking hell's happening to me? And it's just the question. You, do, I just seem to fuel it and just add more questions. And it's the irrational fears. It, it's so strange. Right. Like, I... I can have like twinges and stuff like that and I don't necessarily react. And even though I know that it's only a cold because I have a snotty nose, maybe a bit of a sore throat. Right. And I know that that's all it is. But still, there's just something at the back of my mind that says I'm in some kind of danger from it. What if? Yeah, yeah. What if? Okay, so <clears throat> yes, those symptoms are are kind of feeling this is good. We'll compare what we got going on here and like the cool. difference and and how we're dealing with it. So um, for me, it started really the night before yesterday. So today's Thursday. So that would have been like Tuesday night for me and I could feel it. My throat started getting really scratchy and kind of sore and, uh, my, my sinuses just kind of felt swollen and inflamed. And then yesterday my ears started getting plugged up. So right now, both of my ears are pretty plugged and my left ear hurts. I, I may have an ear infection. I'm going to the doctor in a little bit to find out. But, uh, so the ear thing means that I'm getting a little bit dizzy when I turn yeah, my yeah. head a little bit. That's what I've been getting. Yeah. Let's see. You're a little bit out of sync. Let's see if you get back. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm just There you go. Okay. <laughs> now, you- yeah, now I can tell we're back in sync. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah so for me, it's I, I might have a slight fever. I, I feel a little bit a little bit warm. But generally speaking, like you said, it's just I probably have an ear infection, whatever. It's annoying to me. So unchallenged. <laughs> just have an ear infection. It's it is it is an annoyance for me. I have something that that um, I have plans for tonight that that I really don't want to like get out of. Um, I really I want to go and do what needs to be done tonight and, and what I want to do tonight. Um, and for me, it's just an annoyance. So I think it's interesting how how it's impacting us differently. It's weird, like because you say that, like I'd forgot, but like the just moving my head slightly, and you just get—it's not a dizziness for right. me. It's it's just like an off balance. Maybe I just feel like I'm not a hundred percent there, or it's, I don't know whether I can focus properly or something. Sure, but it's just like when I get that, even though I know why it's happening, or yeah. I think I do, like my ears are obviously. I'm feeling that kind of stuff as well. Right, but it it just triggers something else. It sparks something. It's just that concern. The worry, even though even though I'm sitting here and I know, and at the time that it's happening, I I know, I know why it's happening. But it's still there's just something. So, do you find that there's a difference between that twinge of anxiety or feeling the anxiety levels rise when you're physically ill versus when you're not? Is it more likely to take hold if you're feeling under the weather? I think yeah, yeah. It it just means that I'm more focused inward. I guess that's probably what it is. I think about how I'm feeling more, which then just carries over into that, I suppose. When I start inward thinking, yeah, it usually ends up going down that same path. I think that makes sense because when we don't feel well, 
you know, regardless of what's wrong, a, a, a sore throat or whatever, a cold, like, like we both seem to have, you know, you can't help but notice how you feel. It's just yeah, right. Yeah. It's in your face all the time. Like, this is really annoying and it's right there. So you can't help but think about it, I guess. And so if you're subject to a little bit of health anxiety, because I think this is really probably what this is all about. Yeah. No? I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. Um, you know, it's hard not to think about how you feel. And then when you're thinking about how you feel, do those negative and irrational thoughts start to take hold? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So the question probably would be, what makes what makes it different? Now, I, I've never had, um, I, I will admit, I've never dealt with health anxiety. I've, I, so it's hard for me to say. I know, I know that that's been an issue for you yeah, on and yeah. off. Yeah. So, yeah, big... but tell me, I, I, it's, it's a bit of a foreign concept to me, so I can't speak that intelligently about it, but what, you're what asking it, me to be intelligent. I'm asking you to oh. be intelligent, young man. Yes. <laughs> I know you have it in you <laughs> at, at least once a week. I know it's possible. So, yeah. so what is it? What is health anxiety? Well, for me, it's, I don't know. I've seen other people refer to it as being afraid of getting some kind of disease or whatever it is. Sure. But I think most people would be afraid of getting something like that. It's just the irrational, the irrational fear of it, like convincing yourself that you probably have got it, you know, maybe check in blood pressure and heart rate and find a abnormal mole or something on your skin. And then you immediately just think the worst. Right. That's probably health anxiety, but I also get it with like, any kind of sensation so even just like weak legs or anything like that i go down the path of this is more something more sinister yeah. that's the thing for me it's like even though i know this is just a cold there's always just something that makes me feel like there's a danger yeah or it's going to go further than just having a runny nose you know yeah it makes sense and do you feel like it's uh do you feel like those thoughts are more of a an immediate danger, like something really bad is going to happen now, or it's an indicator that you have some, some I think, yeah, more it's a, serious it's a, affliction of some. Yeah, kind. it's a gradual thing for me. Okay, that's what it's, and it, it seems to like because it happened last night. I I just felt under the weather. We were sitting eating dinner, yeah. and then went and sat on the sofa and just tried to relax for a bit. But I just it just it builds and builds, and it, I'm constantly thinking, what's going on. Or how am I feeling? That's probably the thing. I'm sitting there questioning, like, am I all right now? How am and I then feeling? when I, if I am all right at the time, when I think, am I all right? It usually triggers something, and then I think, oh no, here we go. Interesting. Okay. So even when you think, am I okay? And you're feeling okay. Yeah, yeah. That can just that... just the the concept of actually bringing my attention to it. Yeah. It can actually start the cycle. And then what I find is it doesn't actually usually end until I reach the point of panic, usually. Really? That's where it goes. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's either that or sleep. Or maybe if I am feeling in tune enough, I can go and relax for a bit, like maybe do a relaxation thing. Yeah. But usually it has to escalate to a panic. Maybe not a full-blown, like, off-the-scale panic, but just a, enough to make me hit that peak right. and then level out and as crazy as this sounds does that help is it sort of like a release valve it does for me really it's, it's weird because I'll, I'll like when i can feel it when i can feel it bubbling i'm actually want that panic to come so i can then just really? level out yeah yeah get, yeah. Get on I've, I've had, yeah yeah i've had many times where i felt like that like during the day if it's i can feel it i just feel uneasy then i would rather just have the panic attack now yeah and then no and I wonder Weird. if uh, the difference there, and again, not having a lot of personal experience with it, but you know, if you're forced into a situation where you're out somewhere that makes you uncomfortable, you, you can escape to the car or go home. But uh -huh. if you're ill, you can't really, you know, you can't escape that. My ears are plugged; I can't get away from it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, so that that could be it too, and maybe that's why, in, in your situation, just the re the actual release of having a panic. Yeah, yeah. You know, might might help. So I, I think with this, and again, I've heard many descriptions, and yours is pretty accurate in terms of what people get fixated on when they have health anxiety. Yeah. And it always comes down to, it's, it's a different thing. It's the cognitive part of cognitive behavior therapy. That's what I was going to say. It's yeah. It, it, Self-talk. It, it really is, because in the end, what's fueling that, I think, it's, it's entirely cognitive. It's, yes, the physical sensations, but, you know, we all get sick from time to time. Mm. Um, and how do those negative thought patterns take root and continue to snowball 
or or not be able to let go. They just get stuck in that. And I know people who have convinced themselves of some pretty horrible things. You know, they've just gotten a cold and been absolutely convinced they have stomach cancer or they have yeah 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 just some sort of multiple sclerosis. I've, I've heard a lot of different things. And um, I think most most anxiety sufferers would say that they've had all of those things. Yes, at least that <laughs> because one. that's the, yeah yeah that's. And people are still convinced, like I'm still convinced at times that I have serious things. I said it to you before we went live, like yeah. the last 48 hours I've just been thinking, how can this just be anxiety? But I'm in that, I've, I've said it so many times, like when I mentioned, am I the only person that feels like this all the time? And I'm back there again, like thinking, am I the only person that feels like this all the time? But two weeks ago, or a week ago when we did a podcast, I didn't bloody feel like this. But it's so weird, like, when you're in the moment, I'm still convincing myself that it's always like this. Huh. And I know that it's not. Yeah, even though you can actually look at video of yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and say, exactly. hey, that was me feeling really good last week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think, again, the wild card is you, you do physically, you know, you, you've got something. You have a cold. Something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Your throat is scratchy. Your nose is runny. And, and <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, so it puts you in your own head and it focuses you inward and all those things. So... So what do we do about it? I mean, really, in the end, I think the question is, and I get asked this a lot, like, how do I deal with health anxiety? And, and not having had direct experience, it can be a little difficult. But I, I think the mechanism really here is learning those cognitive tools, how to identify those negative thoughts and those negative thought patterns, those irrational thoughts, how to, how to identify them, and then either learn to dismiss them or to replace them with other mm -hmm. thoughts. Um, and in this case, I think they're, they're it would be health related. I suppose the negative thoughts are going to be health related. How could this just be anxiety, like you were saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, like oh, I'm dizzy, so that it, it must be something very bad is going to happen. And I know that when I was like at my worst, and there were times when I had to deal with some very obsessive type thinking on a lot of different topics. What I learned was, and this was a little bit of exhausting, but I'll share the experience anyway. Uh, it's not specifically health related. For me, I had other intrusive thoughts that were just constantly in my head all day long. And I would literally, um, I had a therapist who made me sit down and say, okay, well, write me a list of things that you like. And and it used to freak me out because I'm like, oh my God, I, I, I was feeling so low Nothing. that I, I, right, I couldn't think of anything. She's like, no, yeah. it doesn't have to be like Nirvana. Just give me something. Like, you know, what do you like about your car? And I'm like, well, the seats have heat in the winter that's nice she goes write it down and and for the longest time on my phone i would keep that list in a note i probably still have it on my phone most likely mm -hmm. and it was a list of five or six things and she said well when you start to feel those thoughts take the list out you know and you have to yeah, do yeah. two things number one a thought is just a thought it's not reality i control my thoughts and i can choose to think something else and i would have to literally repeat that in my head over and over and over as I went throughout my day. And it, it was freaking exhausting, dude. I'm not, I will not lie. Yeah, yeah. And look at that list and like, oh yeah, the, the heated seats in my car or like listening to my kids playing or, you know, mm -hmm. this, a song that I like. And I would, you know, I was kind of going through the motions, but it taught me that I could control my thoughts. Yeah, yeah. And I think <clears throat> when it comes to health anxiety, we're probably looking at a similar type of thing, which is how you'd approach it. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. It is, it's totally about the way that you perceive whatever it is, a sensation or... Right. That's totally what it's down to. I think... That, the, go on. Well, the wild card here, though, is that at the moment, if you're dealing with health anxiety because you're ill, which is the reason why we did this topic today... Yeah. You, know, you you do feel like crap physically at the yeah, moment. Yeah. So you can't, you know, for me, I learned to do that strictly cognitively. The thoughts themselves were the problem. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas I think maybe in your situation today, for instance, it's the thoughts that arise from the physical, just feeling yeah, poorly. Yeah, yeah badly. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, you know, you'd have to learn to to just keep re reinforcing the idea that, well, yes, oh, an Occam's razor is our friend like all else being equal the simplest mm -hmm. explanation is usually the right one so like do you think you you may be caught a cold because <laughs> your kids are in school oh, picking up awesome. germs yes or do you think you have some sort of like alien cancer that no one's ever heard of that will kill you yeah. the the exactly. odds are much better that you have a cold right i think something that i was thinking about because we talk so much about like doing the exposure stuff and yeah the stuff for it and that's something that i've always sort of focused on was right. like gauging how i gauging my success on how far or how long i can be out of the house for and i've really kind of neglected 
caring for myself, like nutrition, lifestyle, the things that we've discussed before. Sure. And then I sit here at home and I feel like crap, even if I'm not feeling it, like if I've not got a cold or anything. Right. I can sit at home, feel lethargic, dizzy or whatever. And then I think, oh, if I go out the door and walk 200 yards today, that's going to make me feel better, which it might. Right. But the fact that I'm eating junk food and not sleeping properly and not exercising and not taking down time, you know, that kind of stuff is also contributing. It is. So I think like discussing this and health anxiety and that if you actually take more care of yourself, Mm -hmm. you might you might not find yourself in the position where you're experiencing the sensations or whatever that's triggering that stuff in the first place. Uh, you know I mean? Yeah, that's probably true. I mean, unless you physically get ill, like like we appear mm. to both be right now. But yes, like lethargic or tired or aches and pains. Like yeah, you can some sometimes you can prevent those things from happening if you just would you, take care would of you yourself. S- would you say that like health anxiety would usually stem from an actual sensation or a symptom? I, I it's hard for me to say because I've never yeah, really yeah. had health anxiety, but but from I would what say I, for me it probably is. There's it, always there's got to be some defining factor or some what there's got to be off. something yeah that, yeah that you think is something more dangerous. I think in the communication that I've had with many people over the years, and when I get asked about health anxiety, it usually is triggered by either an illness of some kind or mm-hmm. even just you know a feeling that that you didn't have before. Like, oh, yeah, my, yeah. my leg hurts today. It didn't hurt yesterday. It's like, funny you should say that. <laughs> my, sho- my shoulder has been hurting for a week. Uh-oh. It's rotator so cuff. No but, I, but no, but that's a weird one because it doesn't really bother me. Like, it, re- it actually really hurts. I yeah. wake up in the morning and my sho- the pain that I'm getting in my shoulder is ridiculous. Yeah. But it doesn't bother, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. That's so but interesting. I've, I've had it before. I've had it quite a few times. And yep. it just passed. Like, maybe I've slept on it. Yeah. A bit weird. Yeah. But it doesn't bother me. I, th- I find that I fascinating. Start running. Yeah, and that'll send you kind of up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and I find that you know I wish if, well if I could figure that stuff out you know I'd be yeah, a very, yeah. very very wealthy man. But because that that always amazes me. Now why does your shoulder pain not bother you? But but the runny nose does. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. But so I think you're right. Like if you focus, and sometimes we get caught in this. Like I know I did too. When I was at my worst, I would focus just on the exposure, like getting out, driving, doing the things that were difficult for me. And sometimes you forget about the other stuff, like the the cognitive and mental stuff is just as important. I'm going to mention it again, but that the anxiety and phobia workbook, that's where I've actually realized that I was sitting reading it last night, not feeling great. Right. And then I'm reading stuff like take 20 minutes out every day to do some kind of relaxation. Yeah. Do 30 minutes exercise every day. Yeah. And and just because you're going to benefit from it, regardless of whether you've got anxiety or not, those things are beneficial to human bodies. So why not give yourself every chance to progress? Do it, do the things that you should be doing anyway. Yeah. It makes sense, doesn't it? It does make perfect sense, and it's a really good point, and it actually – fits with the topic we're talking about today being what do you, what happens when you're ill and it spikes your anxiety if you have health anxiety i actually had um <clears throat> i had a question on facebook from from a woman two days ago okay. who, who kind of talked about this to a certain extent where she's doing her exposure work and she's pushing but what happens when you're home alone with your thoughts and the thoughts are the problem and in the case and i think you know, we can agree that right now the thoughts are the problem. If you're feeling ill, yep. you've got that thought pattern is happening and it's, and it's causing you problems. How do you deal with that? And, you know, do you just have to learn to be brave in the face of your thoughts? And, and it was a really solid question. Mm. And I think the answer is no, you don't. You can learn those skills. So when I talk about walking around literally looking at my phone and a list of stupid things that, that I liked yeah. and repeating yeah. over and over and over, a thought is just a thought. I can replace it with another thought. These are skills that we should be practicing every single day, whether you feel badly or not. Because yeah, yeah. when your nose gets runny and your ears get plugged and you start to have that thought pattern kick in, you will have learned the skill of quieting your mind and dismissing yeah, those yeah. thoughts. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, but, yeah. but you can't wait until it happens. You have to build the skill mm. daily, like like anything else, like learning how to ice skate. You, you I can't, agree. Right. Yeah. You can't practice when you're ready to get in a hockey game. You have to practice before you get in the hockey game. So, mm. yeah. So I, I think, I, I don't know, so much of we focus on the physical and we really forget to focus on the the, the mental, yeah, the yeah. cognitive, yeah. you know, yeah. like, hey, I made it to 
whatever, the park. I'm not going to say supermarket because <laughs> I'm, <getting killed. laughs> I'm getting killed for like picking on the supermarket all the time. <laughs> but um, Hey, I made it to the park today. Great. Or I drove around the block today. That's awesome. But did you also take time and do some relaxation? Did you practice yeah, your meditation? Yeah. Did you practice your self thoughts or your, your imagery or your guided, you know, whatever? Yeah. So many good tools that we could use that would help. Yeah, I've, I've never really thought of it like that. I've always, as I say, gauged progress. Right. on how far I can go yeah. and, ha- and like building up the courage every day. And if, so, if an exposure goes badly and you lose a bit of confidence or, you know, cause it does, it makes you feel so tired as well when you constantly, if you're doing it every day, yeah, then, you know, maybe do step back, take those steps a bit smaller, but bring the other stuff into play yeah. as well. That's the, that's something that I've never really thought of. So I'm definitely going to relax. So I think the, that's good. I think the takeaway from this discussion, and unfortunately you having a cold and me having whatever I have, is you know it has to be a well-rounded approach. It's mm-hmm. not just the exposure of getting out and driving or, or walking or whatever. It's also doing those – working mm-hmm. those cognitive tools that we have to work. That's it. That's super important, and they matter. And I will tell you that they matter beyond just anxiety. So for me, I know that a big turning point was – once I even got past the point where I had no problem, I was getting in the car, I was driving around, I felt like life had, was returning back to normal. Yeah. If I had any sort of stress placed on me, like in my business, bam, the anxiety would come out. And that was purely, you know, cognitive. Like I wasn't handling the stress well at all. And so the, yeah. a, a big turning point for me was as I started to practice those skills more on a daily basis, I got to the point where something would happen, something would break, there'd be an emergency of some kind. And, and I could just like – Zen my way through it. Mm-hmm. Like, no problem. Like, see very clearly, we need to do this, 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 and this. You do this, you do this, you do this, and, and things would get solved. And I wouldn't go into a panic over it. And, so I, go on. Sorry. No, and, and I think in a way, you may find if you have health anxiety, that would translate to you too. So if you get better at those skills, the next time you wake up with a runny nose, might not have the same impact. I was going to say it kind of relates to the exposure stuff. We mentioned it last week where – I had that list of five things, and when I reached the fifth, I was able to do so much more than just the fifth. Yes. It's like this. Once you learn to manage the thoughts on one level, you'll notice that you're managing them for many different areas. It doesn't matter. It yeah, do- it yeah. doesn't matter. And I, and I will say, anxiety aside, the skill of quieting your mind on demand and like conjuring up instant calm kind of turns you into a bit of a superhero. I'm not going to lie. Like yeah, yeah. when all hell is breaking loose – you know, if you could just stay calm and focused and you see clearly and things seem to move slowly and it's easier to assess the situation because you can quiet your mind and really focus on the important things and not let all the other noise get out of control. It's a valuable skill. Everybody should learn it. Everybody, anxiety or not. So and that's the high work for the week, meditation. Yeah, I think learn to me and to bring it back to the health anxiety thing, since it's the thoughts, those irrational thoughts, oh my God, I have this, oh my God, oh, yeah. I have cancer. You know, learning to recognize that's not a thought that I want. I'm going to either let it come and go, dismiss it, and just empty my mind and quiet it, or I'm going to learn how to replace it with something else. I'm going to remember that cool picnic that I went on or, you know, my my eighth birthday party, whatever the hell it is for you. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so learning that stuff. You know, you realize that you just triggered half our viewers by saying (laughs) the C word. uh, What? There was a C word? Did I say a C word in there? No cancer. People oh. just don't. And it's, I hate it. I hate even saying the word. But then when you think about it, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Just because you talk about it or you worry that you've got it doesn't right. mean you're going to get it That's at so the end of the day. Yeah. So cognitively speaking, do you really hate, like don't even like to say the word? No, I don't. Well, I mean, it's a terrible word anyway. Nobody wants to get that, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but re- okay, that's, that's so interesting. Mm. Very interesting. I'll, t- I'll tell you a, sl- a short story along those, very short. For me, oh. when, when I was really dealing with those obsessive thoughts, it was when I was coming off my medications and my brain was just scrambled eggs. And we'll talk about that one day. But I was obsessed with, I was focused on death all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, one day I'm not going to be here, blah, blah, blah. Just these horrible thoughts would go through my head all the time. And it got to the point where I wouldn't even want to say that word. Yeah. And my kids were small and they wouldn't say the word. I, I somehow had let that rub off on them. Right, the yeah. word death or dead was like f- yeah. forbidden for like six months around me. And I remember them saying like, well, you know, it's not alive. <laughs> I 
they had to work around it. Right. So uh, what you're saying <laughs> is totally normal. It's not crazy at all, but it's interesting. Wait, I've had, I've had that before. Like I'll be lying in bed and when you have that thought, the death thought, yeah. and it's, it's actually like it puts you so close to a panic or for me, like in a flash, you can have that. Yes. It's scary. I don't want to think about it. It's scary. And that's a whole other topic. And we yeah, might, yeah. people might get a little freaked out with listening to us even right think, now talking you, about it. But Do you think like the crux of most anxiety and panic it is a fear of death? Surely. Ooh, I don't know. We're getting kind of Freudian here. but um, Going deep again. We are going deep. <laughs> uh, I mean, the fear, we talk about danger, right? We feel like there's danger. And, and what's the ultimate danger? You know, phys- yeah. physical harm or, or loss of life. So it's, I guess it's possible. Like I feel so badly right now that I'm afraid that I might be in so much danger that I, it could be the end of me. I, I, it's possible. That could be it's weird. It? it could be a thing. Yeah. Because then I'll say like in the next breath, I'll say like, <clears throat> if, even if I was to die right this second now, I yeah. ain't even, I ain't going to care, am I? Right. Well, but, but that's how you that's how you know that you turn the corner around that. Yeah, sort of yeah, obsession. no, but I've, I've I've always thought like that. So for me, the answer isn't it isn't really a fear of death right. because I sort of accept that when that happens, this is a horrible topic. It is a horrible. Well, Gonna run off in a minute. Uh, dear. No, but I'm not I'm not really scared of that because I know that once it happens, I ain't gonna know. I think the fear for me is more like the sitting in the, or the laying in the hospital bed and the yeah. probably. I'll tell you what the thing is: it's probably having to go to a freaking hospital. That's the thing that freaks me out. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Mm. Because you have to stay there and can't. Yeah, leave. yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to. Yeah. Well, Unless we they can operate on me and maybe in the garden. Oh. <laughs> uh, that, there, may the be, there may be sanitary <laughs> concerns there. I'm not sure. But I'm willing to take the risk. I'm willing to take the risk. I'll sign a waiver. Just cut me open here. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah, it's a, that, is a, that is a very tough topic to talk about. I think mm-hmm. especially for people in our situation, we may have a bunch of people who are a little bit on edge just hearing us have this yeah, little, yeah. little two-minute conversation. We probably should have the conversation one day mm-hmm. because it is mm-hmm. a thing. It is a thing. But uh, – so that's the deal. Both feeling yeah, ill. We started but, talking about health anxiety. I know. And then we wound up with death. Sorry, <laughs> folks. That's no. We didn't. Yeah, we didn't see, plan well, that. It's, but, it's the only thing that you can be sure of. Yeah, that's what they see here in the U.S. Death and taxes, right? So, yeah. and interesting tweets from our president. Um, <laughs> so, I do. We want to talk about. Do you want to take any questions? You get any good questions this week? I've got some questions. Yeah, I've got some questions from the twelfth episode and the thirteenth. I haven't even posted the 12th episode. I will post it this morning. Oh, so the, one the 13th, of the, I mean. One of the comments on the 13th one was, please, please do a video on health anxiety. So here we are. There you go. Here we are. <laughs> they, say, they say it's Laura. Uh, she says it's especially difficult when there's a spe- specific condition one fears and there's no definitive answer from the doctors. So, yeah, I guess, I mean, a lot of people that suffer with anxiety go to the doctors and if they've been numerous times, you do often find people say that the doctors have just said that's anxiety sure and then people start to worry that you know surely not everything is anxiety they must have missed something the doctors. Yeah, yeah yeah that's one of the big fears in sure but well, if i mean if the doctors see that many patients and they've seen it all haven't they the gps so yeah. if they were if they were genuinely concerned they'd follow it up they're not just going to say oh it's just anxiety it's just in your head yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a tough one too because it's hard when you know you have a medical professional that says you're actually fine, but mm. I, I but I don't believe you. Sorry, doctor, yeah. I don't believe you. Yeah. Something must be wrong. Mm. Um, I don't know how you deal with that. That's a tough one. I think you just got to take that word for it. I guess. Yeah, and That's I think good. after a while, I, I think doesn't experience matter too. After a while, like just I, gonna I, say, I've had this pain yeah. in my hip or whatever, my knee for for you know two months, and nothing has happened. So That's all it. right, I just my knee is hurt. What can I do? been having dizzy spells and freaking out for over 10 years right many if, it years. Was, if it was something more sinister then surely i'd be i'd know about it by now that's yeah. what i think if it was anything serious but there are certain conditions that can actually cause anxiety but that's probably another topic it is another topic but but i think even so experience does matter and the longer time should be our ally we i think we've touched on this before a couple of times like like after you've experienced 10,000 panic attacks 
yeah, yeah. theoretically, you should not really have to be afraid of one anymore. But, mm-hmm. and the same thing holds true. If you're convinced that you have something wrong with you and it's been six months and you still have that pain in your back and the doctors keep telling you there's nothing wrong. Well, you have no other change in condition. You're able to live your mm-hmm. life. Everything is fine. The odds are there's nothing really wrong with you sooner or later. Like yeah. common sense has to start to kick in. I think, I think um, I would agree. I Another agree. question. Sure. This one's completely different, but it was uh, Breaking Necks 23. We've had questions from him before. I recognize the name. Yeah, how do we feel about CBD oil, which is completely off topic, but Ooh, it's, it's, totally it's a question. Exotic. It is a question. I don't know. Got I'm the not... answer. Come on. <laughs> how do Get I feel me. about it? Okay, I'll, I'll make it a brief answer. We, that's a whole other topic we could do, too. It's just like that sort of herbal supplement. I think we should, thing. yeah, yeah. I, I think I... But, I've been talking to my wife about buying some because I obviously vape. Yeah. I don't smoke anymore, but you can get CBD vape oil. Yeah. So, so CBD I may, is I may trial it for the guests, for the viewers. I may so trial it. The uh, the object of the game. So CBD is the just without the THC. Correct. Correct. Okay. So. <clears throat> here's my overall thought on CBD or any of those sort of CBD or any of those things. I, 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 it's not something I go after myself, but you prefer the hard stuff. Yeah. For the hard stuff. I think, uh, I, I think I, I tend to avoid trying to, uh, trying to deal with anxiety by ingesting something, you know, I, I don't, huh. I don't want to swallow something, drink something, sniff something, or rub something on my skin necessarily to address this. Cause I don't, I don't think I need that. Yeah, yeah. I think perhaps depending – because the, the question is just what do we think about CBD oil? It doesn't say in yeah. regards to curing anxiety, but you bang on. If, you, if you're going to use it to try and eliminate anxiety, then I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Right. But if you want to maybe just take the edge off, maybe a bit – if you've had a stressful day, yeah. work's got on top of you a bit. Sure. And you want to come home and drop a few drops on your tongue or vape a bit of CBD. Yeah. I don't think there's any harm in it, but it's not – a tool. You shouldn't be using it as a tool. As long as you're not using it as as an escape. Like I, yeah, I, yeah. I have – because the way I would look at it with CBD oil or anything, whatever substance or herb or whatever you, you want to try. Lavender. Yeah. I think if you, if you get to the point where you would be worried that you're going to run out of it, like, mm. oh, I'm out. Like this is problematic. Yeah, yeah. If you get yeah. to the point where you are worried about not having it, then it's a crutch. It's Then you got to get past that. So that's my view. That's my – that's the 10,000-foot view of CBD oil. Yeah. And it makes me crazy when I hear people talk about stuff like that. And not only do they say it relaxes them, but it, it stops their car from burning oil. Their electric bill is lower. <laughs> it cures every – like their kids are getting better grades in school. Like, please. You know, it just loses credibility for yeah, me. Yeah. So it's a little rough. But anyway. I've seen so many videos that say CBD cured my anxiety. And then a couple of weeks later, you, they post another video saying, I'm having a panic attack right, right now. Right. It's kind of rough. So that's my view on yeah. CBD oil. Don't let it be a crutch. Uh, I have, one more. yeah, we'll do one more. Let me just acknowledge, cause I, I know she's Jackie. Um, I said we would answer your question and we were going to do your question as this topic, uh, probably next week. Next, next one. Yeah, it was my fault. Cause Drew mentioned that he had a cold and then I said, that's okay. I think, it, worse. I think it was fine. The question was, and, and we'll, we're going to do a whole episode on this. The question had to do with. How do you use exposure to get better at things that you can't really practice, like getting on a plane? Because, you know, you can't really practice flying around yeah, the world day. on it every day. Right. So, we, Jackie, we, we will probably do that next week. Sorry about that. You'll have to wait another week. But I just wanted to at least let her know. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. You got another one from your end? I have, yeah, yeah. I mean, this one's kind of similar to what you've just said, and it's how do I build trust that it's only anxiety? And somebody actually commented on Twitter saying that that was a good comment on YouTube. How do you convince yourself that it's just anxiety and not something more? So that kind of ties into what you've just said, because you would still need to convince yourself that it's only anxiety that's stopping you from flying around the world. Uh, yeah, to a certain extent, I think. How do you convince yourself that it's not anxiety? Because at some point i i think we've just said that yeah it's experience right it's experience i, I understand it in the first you know the first week it happens well, it's perfectly understandable to not understand that it's just anxiety and you may think that you're dying and all those things I, I i get that but you know after you've dealt with it for a few months or six months or a year or years how you know at some point 
Like, well, I feel like this all the time and I'm still standing. I'm fine. I'm perfectly healthy. There's nothing physically wrong with me. Then why would I think it's anything more than anxiety? Sooner or later, like actual real world experience has to sort of matter. But the crazy thing is, and like we're sitting here discussing this, yeah. and it's a, a real moment, I know that it's just anxiety, yet I'm still here, freaking out daily sometimes. <clears throat> so even like with all that experience that I've got, right. many, many years, yeah. like a, th- a third of my life has passed and I've had this. And it's never really, I mean, it did get better a bit, but now I'm, like when it's, when it's bad, it's as bad as it ever freaking was. Hmm. But I think there's a difference. So the difference is feeling anxiety and, and thinking that you're in more danger than you are because you think there's something really wrong physically. This is a, I think this is a heart quiet. attack. This is a stroke. This is, you know, some horrible disease. That's one issue. And that's when I say, like, at some point, that fear, yeah, the experience yeah. has to tell you it's not a heart attack. I've had this 10,000 yeah. times before. But you could still react negatively to the anxiety itself, even though you yeah, know yeah. it's not a heart attack. I know I'm not having a heart attack, but I still would rather not have a panic attack. You know, I would choose to have one if, if I'm, I think you know. that's the thing with me. Yeah, I think rather than me go off down that path, I don't do that so often anymore. But yeah. I still react to the anxiety and the way that I feel. Right. But it, but it's not so much a a fear of this is something more. Right. It's just a it, it's an uncomfortable. Whether it's a fear or not, I don't know whether I'm scared of the way I feel anymore, which probably sounds really weird. No. I just don't, I just don't like it anymore. Right. I get it. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. wants to be there? That makes perfect sense. And, and it is – okay. So it is fear. You are feeling fear, but you're just not afraid of the fear anymore. Yeah, But, but yeah. it's still fear nonetheless, mm-hmm. and it's yeah, no yeah. fun. So I think the difference is, you know, how can you convince yourself it's just anxiety? Well, that's experience. But – and at some point, I think we all move, we, we move on. We don't think it's a heart attack anymore, for instance. Mm, but, mm. We're, but we still do everything we can to avoid the anxiety. Not because yeah, we yeah. think we're avoiding a heart attack. We just don't want to feel that way. So mm. two different animals. Did we answer that question? Probably I not. Don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was my fault. <laughs> That's all right. Oh, um, what else did I get this week? I didn't really get much on Facebook. Let's look on YouTube real quick. Let me switch. I asked I asked on Twitter if there was anything anybody wanted to know about. And 90% of the answers were yes, maybe the physical symptoms of anxiety. So we're, we're back there. We're it back always to, seems to boil back to. Yeah, we're back to everybody yeah. wants it. Does, it. does anyone else get? Does anyone else yeah, get? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but the thing with me, like, I get all these, I get every bloody symptom going but it doesn't really help me knowing that someone else does because it doesn't stop me feeling it it no. just no i just i don't know i'm sick of it I think i'm it... annoyed i think i've reached that point drew and i probably reached it like many years ago and that maybe motivated me right but i, I feel like i'm at the point like i'm i'm really sick of feeling like this that you're you're getting angry about it now yeah yeah i'm starting to get a bit cheesed off and i want to Cheesed open a few off. more doors. Yeah, man, cheese off. Cheese, I'm going to start using that. I'm bringing it over <laughs> yeah. here. I'm bringing it over the ocean. I like that. Um, Copywriting that. That's not a bad thing. That's not a yeah, bad no, thing. Yeah, no, I think I'm going to try and use it to my advantage, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's not a bad thing at all. I'm having a hard time loading YouTube for whatever reason. So <clears throat> next week I'll look at my YouTube comments and see. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I got nothing else. You got anything else? I'm just looking... Uh... Somebody asked how about when people get people get annoyed about the symptoms that you're showing. They get annoyed. Meaning Yeah. Well they, it was the, the chap that burps and sniffs or clears his throat all the time. It's uh, breaking it. So people around him get annoyed when he does it. People and look, wait, on occasion my missus has got annoyed when I display anxiety. I don't know whether I'm like standing in a queue maybe and I'm doing this yep. like moving side to side or I'm doing weird things my missus gets annoyed sometimes does she, call, I, does she call you out on it like hey you know you're doing that now uh, usually after that's interesting but it's too late man. I've already done it you know what if anyone's watching it's tough <laughs> the way <clears throat> excuse me the way I would respond to that like people get annoyed at, at what you're displaying because of anxiety that's not a that's not a bad thing. 
That's not a bad yeah, thing. Yeah. And, and I always look at it this way. People who, when they don't, you know, the whole nobody, they don't understand thing. Oh, they just don't, they don't understand. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? I'm happy that they don't understand. And when somebody gets annoyed at you for clearing your throat or sniffling or whatever it is that you are doing, I just read a, uh, <laughs> oh. I, I just read a comment that I didn't know was waiting for me. I'll tell you, I'll tell you off the air. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'm going to publish this comment. Um, Anyway, okay. <laughs> so uh, what I was going to say was... What video is it on? It's, I don't know, which were probably the last one, episode 11. Okay. People um, can go and check it. Yeah, episode 11. So the, <clears throat> on my channel. So uh, people get annoyed when you're displaying whatever. You're swaying side to side or you're tugging on your ear or you're scratching, you know, whatever it is you're doing. I used to tug on my ear all the time. Yeah, yeah. And when people are annoyed by that, use it as a positive. And you know why they're annoyed? Because they don't understand why you're doing it. They don't understand why you're doing it because they know that you are in no danger. They know that. So, yeah, yeah. so instead of being angry or like feeling persecuted or saying nobody understands, oh, they need to understand why I'm doing that. Well, no, they don't. They don't need to understand it. When your kid doesn't want to go to bed because he says there's a monster in his closet, do you have to understand that there's a monster in his closet? You do not because there is no monster in his closet. So, you know, in a way, let those people be models for us. They're annoyed yeah. at, at your little ticks or whatever because they don't understand why you're doing them. So let them model normal behavior. That's my response to that. Don't well, that's it. And, use and it because, as a positive. Yeah, doing those things is actually not saving you from anything happening anyway. Yeah, that's so true. Tugging on your ear didn't. No, it didn't save me from the damn thing. All it did was make yeah. my, this ear probably longer than yeah. the other one. <laughs> and me standing there doing this in a shop. It's not helping. <laughs> If well, if someone was trying to punch you, it might it's, yeah, it's probably maybe. help. You. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> like an MMA fight, you, you, <laughs> it would be very helpful. Um, so that's that's my response to that one. I don't know. It's a good one. <clears throat> but this comment that I'm going to publish now, actually, somebody it, it was suggested that we do a video that talks about if, if like what should your wife do when you're having a panic okay. attack? What should okay. your boyfriend do? What should your girlfriend and all that stuff? We should probably do one of those too. That's, that's oh, probably yeah, probably it's, helpful. It's yeah. yeah, yeah. So, anywho, so that's it. I'm out. I'm out of stuff. I'm going to start good. coughing any moment. So, <clears throat> how, long, how long have we been going for? We've been going for, let's see here. I like to run the clock up. Um, Forty two minutes. Mm. Uh, that's I don't know how oh, we geez. we yeah it's a little bit of a marathon. So prepare for the mid roll advert. <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> mid-roll adverts. <laughs> yeah. Man. All right, folks. I guess we're going to hit the road on this one. I guess next week yes. we'll do that expo. We'll get back onto the exposure topic because it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah I so. like that. We, we, we'll go with a theme, and then if anybody's got comments or questions, something that I wanted to touch on, which we can say for next week, is like irrational, silly fears. Like, example, I want people to share them in the comments, but one for me is like anything with a nut in. If you read something that's got may contain nuts, yeah. I have this weird fear that I've developed a nut allergy in the time that I've opened the wrapper and eaten the chocolate bar. So okay. that's like my irrational fear. And I wondered if, if people wanted to share theirs and we can just look at maybe why or why does that happen? We can share them. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's weird. I, yeah. I've been eating nuts since I don't know. A long time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but every yeah. time I eat one, it's like, this could In be the five one. minutes time, yeah, that's it. This could be the Throat's one. going to close. I do the same thing with pineapple juice. Pineapple Weird. juice, really? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Why pineapple juice? Just pineapple juice? Like somehow you've developed it's an just allergy the to pineapples. The the feeling that it has in your throat when you've drunk it is weird. I don't know. I had a panic attack after drinking a glass of pineapple juice probably about eight years ago. You're going to have to like watch it with the pineapple thing. <laughs> Can you see? That? Oh, that's that's an omen. <laughs> that's Get an off! Omen. There's a pineapple on my forearm. <laughs> Wait, put it in the middle of the screen. Wait, I yeah, can't so, bloody see. It. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> it's hard to do i'm trying to like hey. it's really awkward <laughs> but anyway all right so we'll t we'll touch on that for sure those are good because i had my share of silly ones too over the years i'll share okay so I'll all right guys pineapples. i'll bring the pineapples and the peanuts very good thanks for tuning in as always comments questions right find me at that anxiety guy.com or my youtube channel billy where are you anxietyunited.com there you go so comment wherever you want twitter youtube facebook wherever We'll reread them. We Subscribe, answer them. Yeah, like, like this format share. is good. Yes, if you've got this far and you've enjoyed it. Share the bloody video because somebody else might too. That is very smart. Yeah, subscribe, like, share, do all that stuff. Hit the little yeah. notification button. Smash the like button. I'm supposed to Just say. Just do it. 
All right. We'll see you guys next time. Ta-da. Cheers.